So now uh, we're going to talk about doors and windows. If I come in here, I don't want this in my model to talk about doors and windows. Um, they're pretty straightforward. I'll go ahead and lay down some walls. Okay, got my walls in here. Nothing special. I'm just going here and I, you, you have the ability under architecture, you have doors, windows, you know, this is where all your tools are. If you just come in here, pick a door, um, Revit will pre-select a door for you, but there are many, many options that you have to choose from. We'll just pick a simple door for now. And you just click on the wall where you want it. So once you get the wall in place um, and you've got your door, um, once the door is located, you'll have some different options. You'll see these kinds of moves with like section lines. Um, windows will have the same thing. Um, but this allows you to flip the door and then also change which hand um, the door opens, if it's a left hand door or right hand door. So you, you have those different options. Um, let's say, okay, I've got a typical residential door here, and you see I have only six, eight doors. Um, six eight is pretty small no one really does this anymore it's kind of like really low end uh, door sizing um, we like to do a lot of eight foot doors um, it's definitely uh, it's more expensive um, but we're talking about adding uh, a foot and four inches so instead of paying for a six eight door you might as well just pay for a eight foot door it, it makes more sense you'll have um, higher headers you're just your overall feel of the building will look and feel a lot better as you kind of move through doorways and um, you know openings like cased openings so i've got this six eight door and now i want it to be uh, an eight foot door all you have to do is you go to edit type you want to duplicate it make sure you label this as an eight foot door hit ok and then you come down here to your structure or your dimensions and you'll find your height and you'll just simply change that to eight feet okay and that's done so really easy to use you'll notice a lot of doors in Revit will come with trims um, sometimes they'll, they'll give you the ability to change that trim width right here for some reason let's say I want a six inch trim Hit OK I've got a big six inch trim. That'll be pretty common for like a like a craftsman style house where there's a lot of big trim pieces, um, a lot of woodwork. So that's one option. Um, and then let's say you go to doors and you just you're searching and you're searching and you don't see something you want. If you come over here to the load family option while you're indoors, you'll be able to come to Revit's library of doors this will these files will automatically install when you install the program um, but you can see there's you know some loaded some loaded doors like double glass we'll load that in okay some you'll, you'll notice there's a lot of times where Revit um, says it's not going to load in a family for you even though it's a door and you're under doors let's say I was under a window and I try to load a door it won't work um, your two best options is if it's not loading for you under doors it may be a, a generic model so you, you just go to architecture um, there'll be a generic model symbol and then you can hit um, you don't want to hit model in place you want to hit the other option and that'll also bring up the load family so you can also try that way but we'll just go into residential um, you can see they've got different panels here um, a garage door you know, sliding doors, pocket doors. We'll open that one here. Okay, so now we've got a pocket door in this wall right here. And if you don't know what a pocket door is, it means the door opens into the wall. That way there's no door swing, there's no door hanging out in the space when you're when the doors open. And if you go to the main level here, you'll see what I mean. So you'll see these little side pieces right here are framed out that way the door will slide into the wall um, but this is just another door style here 
we'll put in a sliding door Let's see where is that sliding door okay now we have a sliding door and what this is different to the pocket doors one of these doors will slide over and they'll stack um, it's just a, a different option you see these a lot of like closets where you can uh, slide one door this way and access the side of the closet or slide this one here and access the side of the closet um, so I'm gonna go back and we'll load in uh, a different door so let's try this glass door here Boom. And you also notice a lot of times in the plans, um, you can change these if you were to open up the family. Um, but you'll see the door is modeled as open in the plan. If I go to the 3D view, you'll see that the door is closed. Um, there are ways to change this. If you're if you're looking for certain doors online, maybe um, you can find doors that allow you to change the the open and close um, setting on the door. That way, if uh, if for some reason you want your plans to show all closed, you can do that, or open, or 3D or elevation, you can show them open. It's just what, you, what, you, what kind of preference you have. So now that we have some doors in here, we'll go ahead and add a, a window. Um, so window's gonna be the same exact kind of thing. Um, there's gonna be a bunch of preloaded options. Um, if you're starting a new, a, a new model, or maybe you have a new template, there probably won't be many options here. Um, but again, if you just come over to the load family, make sure you're in the right um, category, go to Windows, and then you'll see Revit has a bunch of different options. Um, like this would be event, you know, you have openings here, um, you know, a bunch of different kinds of options for you to use. So if, if you're having trouble finding what you're looking for, um, there are many different websites you can use to find certain families and um, I'll go over that here in a little bit um, but it's the windows work the same way that uh, doors do you see I get that same arrow <clears throat> there's obviously no door swing here so there's no arrow flipping the window but you can you know change the inset here um, you obviously want the sill side of the window to be inside so this just kind of lets you manage that uh, if you go to your 3D, we'll take another look at this window. Um, it, Revit will always define a sill height for your window. If you're looking to change that, um, it's going to be under properties right here. Uh, if I say I want that at four feet, go ahead and change that. It raises the window for me. Um, this window should also have the um, options to change the height and width. Um, you can also see here that there's no trim on this one. So there are different ways you can approach adding a trim to a window. You can either 3D model it around the window. Um, you can edit the family. So now we're in the family. This is just the window. You can see there are, if I click on that trim right there um, and then I edit family, this is another family within a family. So this can kind of take you down a rabbit trail of, of families. This is definitely something I do not have a lot of experience in just because I don't feel it's necessary to take the time to model certain families when A, you can just 3D model it in the program. Um, you can just 3D model it. Like if I wanted to trim around this window I can go to architecture, component, model in place, and I'll just pick a generic model. I will set my work plane, pick plane right there. I'll click extrusion. And I just really quickly am gonna, you know, outline this trim. You know, I'm kind of just matching what they already have, but this is just showing you that you you can come in here and override what they have by just modeling over top of it. So if I do that, now I have my own trim right here. 
so I can kind of pull these out however I want you know this is this is what I have to work with so I don't think it's necessary to model or to try to go into a family and fix it it's it's very complicated you know people are employed at firms specifically just to manage these families you know it's not something that as an architect you really want to focus a lot of time on unless you're going to be spending a lot of time doing it you know some people might argue with well it, it could be handy down the road to know how to make this model um, you know and customize it but you know there's so many different places out there to get windows from you know in terms of websites I just I don't think it's necessary I mean if, if you come in here and look these are all the parameters that are set up for this window already you know, you have to come in here, you have to understand how each of these work. You have to make sure that you're changing the right one. And then if you're trying to add something to the window, you have to know how to properly add a parameter. You know, I'm not too familiar with how all this works, but there's um, there's parameters that you'll have to come in here and set up. You know, I don't know exactly how to do it again. It's just, it's something I haven't put time into. I just don't think it's necessary, but that's just a way to do it so we'll stop with that and that's going to be this type of family editing is going to be pretty uniform for every type of family you know you're going to be able to model it some ways um, you know there are some times where you need to go in and just kind of remove all the parameters and make a custom window for a certain size with the understanding that that param that window is no longer parametric meaning that if you model it as three foot wide by four foot tall. I can't just come in here and duplicate this and change it like I did the doors and make a new size. You're gonna to have to remodel the whole thing. Um, that's a whole nother conversation. We kind of just went a little bit further into it than I really wanted to, but we'll, uh, we'll leave it at that. So we've got some windows and doors in here. So you know doors have the same options as windows they're, they're pretty similar um, they, doors you know you also have the ability to raise a sill height like let's say this is an exterior door and you're going into the inside your your interior floor is always going to be just a little bit higher than a porch um, this is where you could do that you could say it's okay, it's one inch higher so now you can see my doors above that baseline um, so that's just a, a little overview of doors. Um, now I want to show you some of these websites I'm talking about. So these are these are three websites I've found useful over the years. Um, if if you're looking for something in Revit and you can't find it, you, you want to tr try to look through these three websites. Um, so first here we have Revit City. Um, I'll just show you a real basic overview of what each one has. Um, just be wary. Revit City is pretty slow. Um, they do have a lot of good options here, but um, I typically have a hard time finding, you know, things that are parametric. You know, what I was talking about, if it's one size in the family and then you bring it into the model, you have the ability to change it to whatever size you want. Um, but you can see there are all these different categories here. Um, that you have to choose from. They have materials, so if you're trying to render something, you can look in here for materials. Um, they have, you know, like electrical, like you can probably get lighting and maybe you want a specific looking outlet or switch, you can find it in here. Um, so they're, they're pretty good. Um, Revit City, you'll need to make an account before you can download anything, um, but you can still go in here and search, you know, make sure something's there before you take the time to make an account, but it's, it's pretty easy to set up. Um, next we have uh, BIMobject.com. Um, so this is kind of the same thing. You'll see that there's, you know, materials. Uh, if you go over to the BIM object categories, you'll see there's materials, you know, they have doors, they have construction, so like, this is just a bunch of various objects, you know, balconies, anchors, you know, if you're trying to anchor concrete in, um, you might find a detail there, uh, ladders, roofs, things like that. And then you can see there's obviously a lot more electrical, electronics, you know, it, it goes on and on and on. But this is just another great place to look 
and find you know something that may be really specific to your model that you're looking for. And then the last one is rcat.com, A-R-C-A-T.com. This is another good one. Um, you can see they have a similar setup here. Um, your BIM file categories. You can come in here and, and find anything that you're looking for. So I'm looking for countertops. So, so those are three websites that are definitely good to use. I would recommend them. Um, if you have any questions, um, be sure to leave me a comment. Um, I'll be sure to do my best to get back to you.